scorecard. On the program today, we shall be beaming our searchlight on Eredo Local Council Development Area, where the local government chairman is working round the clock to turn that community around for good. I took him up on um, what he has done so far in four key areas of development. Uh, we talked about uh, the infrastructure, the education, the environment, the human and healthcare delivery, the projects he has done since assumption of office. And that I shall bring to you today on the program. This is Fumi Ayeni. And uh, we're going to take this time out. And when we come back, my guest is going to be seated with me where we shall trash out um, uh, what he has done in the areas I mentioned earlier. Just stick around. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, this is Call Card. And today on the program, we are at uh, Eredo Local Council Development Area here in uh, Ekwe Axis. And um, like I said at the beginning of the program, we want to see what um, a somewhat young looking man is doing to turn this community around. And um, going by what I have seen here today, I'm going to keep my opinion to myself because uh, uh, I want you to see and to hear from the people that um, we are talked to uh, in this uh, community today. And also to hear from the horses now, then you can be free to now, uh, you know, deduce how you're going to see him or view him at the end of the program. This is Mumi Ayeni here in the Redo uh, LCBA. And um, I'm right seated with my guest, but um, I'm going to introduce him to you after this time out. Welcome back. It's now time to meet my guest on Scorecard today. And I'm talking about the chairman of Eredo LCDA, and that's talking about Honorable Adeni Saliu. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As I can see that uh, Eredo wears a very bright look, maybe because you are young, maybe because you are doing um, all you can to turn the place around. Well, things need to change. Really? Okay. So we need to indicate that there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, governance need to change. The way we do business shouldn't be usual. And uh, you will see from the, from the moment you stepped into the local government. Uh, since we came in, we, one of the first things we did was infrastructure. You know, um, because it was almost non-existent when we came. So today we can boast of two you know, buildings within the premises okay. of the local council, you know, and the staff toilet that we just did. Now, the two buildings we did to accommodate the number of staff, because one of the challenges we faced when we came was that there was, you know, uh, attendance in the local government was very low. Staff were not coming to work. And the challenge that I saw there was, you know, where they would sit. Mm -hmm. If there is no comfort, you won't find anyone around. So, and it's important that uh, you know we make the environment conducive for them. And so we did the first one, and uh, we did this now. So that means this mouth-watering edifice we have here was actually constructed by you. Absolutely. Oh wow! You know, uh, when we came, there were we had a building, so we had to. Do it completely, raise it up, and we have this edifice now. Oh, thank God. Okay, the, you, you see, you took me up instantly because uh, the first thing, the thing you're supposed to be talking about on the program today, um, from the four, you know, laid down capital points you are supposed to focus on here in this local government today. Uh, we talked about infrastructure, we talked about um, education, we talked about the environment. And then the human and healthcare delivery. Absolutely. Uh, the, 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 these are the four areas which are looking to, and the, your contributions towards uh, develop, the development of the people and this community in those areas. Now, um, you, you've um, taken it up with infrastructure. Now, let's look at um, those infrastructural inputs you have, uh, you have put into uh, other area, areas of this community. We intervene in the five. Words, at least in 
every word that constitutes the local government, they fail. And even to feel that there's a government in place. So I can break it down for you. Uh, since we came in, uh, we went to town and to attend to basic amenities. We really see a local environment. So, and there are a few things that, you know, are no longer a problem in bigger, you know, society that is still a major issue here. Things like, you know, you know, water. So we had like uh, five major bowls that we dug, you know, in the five wards of the local government. Wow. You know, and uh, the people are grateful. We also intervened in market. Uh, we upgraded, you know, completed and commissioned the Ajeba Wale market in Ibom. Mm -hmm. We also went to... That's uh, boosting up the commerce. So yes, uh, boosting the commerce. Okay. Uh, and uh, we went to Mojoda market. We also gave the market a major toilet for to attack, you know, the environmental hazard that, you know, was almost becoming a major problem there. Then we also started to build schools. As I speak to you, in a boy that is one of the wards, we, we just constructed a fence, a perimeter fence around one of the primary schools. And currently, the, there's a eight you know, room block that has been built uh, as we speak in, in that place. In a place called the Rai, I just completing a town hall for the community. In a few weeks, two or three weeks, we are going to commission it. So there are other you know, areas that we have intervened. We have intervened in education at various levels. We bought books, school bags for the number of you know, children collaborated with Hope Foundation to empower them over uh, six, seven hundred puppies benefited. And when they resume school recently, Bought and uh, printed notebooks for the students. Over 6,000, you know, copies also benefited from it. You know, and at various levels, we you know, intervene, pay school fees here, buy uniforms there, and support, you know, the school system. Then we went into empowerment as well. I'm proud to tell you that uh, recently we graduated about 21 indigenous from. Uh, Nigerian Opportunities Industrial Center in Bagala. We put them on the six month intensive training, uh, resident intensive training. Fully sponsored by, Fully sponsored by the local government, including feeding. And we paid for their accommodation, bought their days, and paid the training fees. Uh, by the grace of God, before the end of the year, we are going to be equipping them 100%. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we, are, we are going to give them you know, places to start their career. You know, profession. Uh, we just got about two acres of land from the community. You know, we're doing uh, where we're going to build a market and put some of them. Now, still, I'll go back to infrastructure. It's somewhere in the Dragoshi, it's another world, they call it World K1. We are building the first local government estate, housing estate for the local government. That, that place, uh, you know, the rings are there. Yes, yeah, the opposite is the Microsera estate. Oh. You know, so just like the opposite is where we are building our own. You know, so we are, we are, we are, that's the first of its kind in this environment. Yes, by local government. So we just behind it, we, are, we have a shopping complex that's also been built for the, for the community. So that there's a number. And we have one in a community called Dora. That's where we're going to have our staff. Housing scheme, is the housing scheme. We have five acres of land that we negotiated with the community. Um, work is currently going on there. By the time all the infrastructure is put in place, of course, we'll be open to, even to to some of you. We and in the community called Dwajogo, so we also have planned a journalist estate. Oh, really? Yes, yes. I we hope have, I will be able to benefit from this, that. This, this is a community that needs to be on the world map. So we need to be friends with people who can help us put it on the world map. It's affordable, and that's the difference between here and, 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 and the and major towns. So we think that the infrastructure that is, you know, uh, being put here by uh, the Excellency Governor King and Body 
community, it's to the benefit of her. And this is a boundary community. It goes, the major road goes directly to Jepode. So it helps, you know, we need to attract more people to live here, to boost the local economy, and help us develop the area. So and, and we, we have record that the journalists would pay me job you know, in doing that. So I want to encourage them and give them a place to stay. And I, I'm just thinking that uh, the name of the estate should go by the journalist estate. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't have a little journalist estate by the grace of God. Okay. Now, healthcare, we, we have also intervened. We, since we came, we visited major healthcare facilities in the Arctic. And um, we want to ensure that the one we have with local government prays 24 hours. You know, then we also equipped and upgraded that uh, of Mojoda. There's a Mojoda primary center that we have upgraded. We bought generators for all of them to ensure that there's power at any point in time that people visit uh, the place. So uh, to the extent that um, we have not recorded any major incidents around, you know, not having, you know, power at the time patients visit such places. So since we came in, we've been busy. Um, to the glory of God, we have this building now. Um, again, I must thank the government for you know, securing this place very effectively. Uh, a few months ago, uh, we were approached by the uh, military. We came here and sought land to build the force operating base. So we gave them a place and we worked with them. The place was you know, built uh, and, and made you know, suitable for, for the military to, to move in. So today we have that very effectively operating now. So, and uh, also, we, the governor recently completed the Oduno uh, Fuja police uh, station. You know, it's fully operational as a police station. It's, uh, all the complement of full fledged police station. And it's also added to the security you know, uh, apparatus of the local government. Then, of course, we have also collaborated with other agencies like the DSS and um, all other you know, military and paramilitary agencies around here to ensure that on a 24 hour basis, we secure the environment. Then, the local government has its own security outfit too. Mm, that we have equipped and put in a position to provide us information, timely information upon which we can act. And, and that's also in place. So I, I will tell you very confidently that so far, so good. Uh, especially recently, we haven't recorded any major security breach in the community. And we thank God for it. Uh, this is an APC government. And we're very proud of the political party that has changed as its mantra. Everything has changed now. We now have a country that is working for everybody. We have a country that is more secure than we used to have. We have a country that has invested in infrastructure heavily. We have major investment in education. We have investment in, investment in security, primary health care, agriculture. So it's a chain of pride that uh, at our time, very responsive to the people and is able to deliver true dividends of democracy. So we thank the President, President Mohamed Dwai, the Vice President Yemi Shibaji, for a good job, for making us believe again in the country that you know, what's promised for everyone. And in Lagos State, what we have witnessed in Lagos in the past three years is a revolution. We thank God Lambert for his commitment development of leaders. We also thank our party leaders, led by Ashwa Gutunde, and uh, other party leaders at the state level for their contribution, for their commitment to the party and for governance, for creating the enabling environment for people to aspire, aspire for political offices, and in giving the space for us to also deliver to the dividends of democracy to our people. And I also want to thank the people of India for giving us the opportunity to be here. You know, their mandate that 
bottom pair. So we're proud and very happy. We will keep assuring them that there's still more that's going to happen. We are going to bring complete IT infrastructure to the council. And this is going to be the post local government in the state that will be fully IT compliant by the grace of God. We are going to empower people. The scheme that trained 21 actually is for 500 people. We're going to train about 500 in real skills. We want to completely stamp out you know, uh, uh, unemployment in our local government. We want people to be fully skilled and to be able to fend for themselves. We are going to invest heavily in agriculture because what we have is land. We are going to boost local industry and commerce. We are also going to invest in primary healthcare, education, and encourage our people to get qualified, become highly educated so they can change the story of these houses. Then we are also invested in the environment. This is the cleanest local government in Lagos. Since we came in, we have cleaned our local government every week. If we go on the road, we won't find anything that is dead. We have invested every week. And we have ensured that on a weekly basis, you know, we have refuse cleared everywhere. And well, this is something that we are very proud of. And it hasn't stopped. So we're going to continue on that. And so many other programs that we have in place. Oh wow, it's been so, so lovely uh, talking to the chairman of the uh, local council development area. And I must say that this is the very first time since we've been going around talking to local government chairman and some of the public officers to have a local government to take up a housing project, a capital project that can only be traceable to uh, governors and uh, you know, ministers. I, I never, I never had that experience to have a local government chairman say for the housing project in this community. That is highly commendable. Um, yes, we can it up from the first now. Then I must assure you that we are going to keep um, close contact with this local government and also uh, monitor their development. And um, you can always bet that I will keep you informed as soon as new things are turning up in this local government. Right now. I'm going to go to town, talk to people. Let's hear the, what they have to say about um, the contributions of the chairman, Honorable Alimi Sali, to the development of the community. Uh, community. Let's come to the The chairman, since assumption of office, has been working almost 24 hours to see that uh, to the success of this uh, administration that is uh, both on infrastructure and some other areas like that. Getting to this council about uh, or a, a year or two years ago, you can now appreciate what is doing, what we are doing on ground. What we, you see what you have on ground here, the terms of infrastructure, there is nothing to write about before. But now you can see for yourself and many people come in, praising him here and there, going to rally and some other areas that they do appreciate. We have a very fine people appreciating the good work. He is the man that we need at this present time that God has given him unto us as a gift to steer the ship of this local council. And we thank God because he came at the right moment to bring new dawn to the governance of a radio SED. And with uh, the project that's cut across all the walls in the radio SD, I want to say that he has performed credibly well. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to commend this administration for the fact that it's a leasing government and if, uh, in many ways contribute to the development of uh, Radio LCD. You know, this is uh, an agrarian society. We are most of the people, they are predominantly farmers and fishermen. And the executive chairman has tried a lot, you know, in the area of uh, rural roads, um, giving uh, little help in, in terms of financial ability to support the, pro, uh, the agricultural activities of the people. And in the part of the CDC, the chairman has been uh, up and down for us in the area of financial assistance. Also, he has been able to touch the lives of the people in the society 
um, providing water in its own capacity, uh, providing amenities within the market environment to make sure that the marketing services of the people are going on as expected. Um, we look at the area of um, lock-up shops in the market also. Then we also look at the area of educational activities to our own children by giving them materials to support their education. In the area of security, he has done a lot to secure the lives and properties of the community. We, he, put on, he, he put up the Momo outfit of which we, he met on ground and, and he has been able to develop on it by giving them the necessary equipment they need to secure the lives and properties of the people. Likewise, the recent uh, Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps, he has been able to provide uh, in his own capacity to make sure that their vehicles and other things are going on to protect the lives and properties of the populace. 100% performance because our local government chairman in person of uh, Honorable Abdul Salih Rasak is doing fine, particularly we market women. He's trying the best he can do by empowerment, firstly by empowerment, because when he's marking, uh, he's, not, uh, he's doing some anniversary in the Redo LCD, he empowered we women. By giving them the little one, we can add to the money we are doing to do our business. So kudos to him in that one. In the, uh, in the line of farming, I am the leader of a farmer women group in Lagos State, and also in Eredo. He empowers us. He loves the farming system too much. In the extent that he told us to go and find 100 hectares of land, we women in Eredo here, we have it at Eredo SCDA here. So we, that's uh, 100 hectares of land. By December, we are going to have to, to put a maize cassava. Well, so he's trying a lot for we women. He's telling us that it is the women that he, we, we are his mother. In this local government, uh, as he was doing always, because he, he always make us happy. He, went, he, he called um, a meeting, like a town hall meeting or community meeting, a meeting. We women, we have an interrogation with us. Mommy, my leaders, what do you want? We are, we are, uh, to make the question balance, what do we need to put, uh, to improve uh, this uh, Eredo, to be proud of we women? It's our son. It's our son, our shama that listening. Not that he's just doing anything, uh, I, I don't care. No, 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 no. For him, that gentleman is 100% with us. Uh, the executive chairman of Eredo SDA, Honorable Adeni Yusoli, is really trying. We have a lot of projects completed and ongoing projects at hand. As you can see here, we have a, a proposed site for their center in Igboe. And also, we have, we'll take your hand and you see a lot of projects going on. We have a school, a primary school there doing defense and the construction of six classrooms and two offices in that primary school. We have a lot of projects going on and we have a completed project. Uh, the chairman is a close friend to the youth. He's very close to the youth. And he, he wanted to do, he's, he's still planning to do uh, youth empowerment, and which will come up before the end of this month. The youth are very, very well pleased. Because the youth also, they have their own contribution to support the government, and he's also supporting us. I want the chairman to continue this way. So, and I will continue to support. I will continue to support him in whichever capacity. My singular advice for him is that our people, which we, the councillors, are representing, are yearning more for him. My advice for him is for him to continue doing more. Um, he shouldn't relent in his effort. And this time around that we are having a uh, political, um, uh, we are having election uh, in forthcoming in 2019. So he should be able to do more so that uh, the government can know that this gov uh, his government of APC is doing, is doing well. My own advice for him is that he's a young guy. And by God's grace, he's, he's, he's reaching higher, higher. This, this uh, local government chairman is just a step stone. What we need from him, as we back him, because we tie him a big, big rapper, which he will never fall. He shall allow, because he to lie. We want him to do more for us. 
like this, uh, we are hearing from the federal uh, women, uh, empowerment of uh, markets women, like our vice president is doing now, in person of VP. Our vice president, Oshibajo, is now moving around the markets, giving token of money to the women. We want him here. We want Oshibajo, he has already been in Lagos, but we want him in our local government. If he is going to, uh, to tell our son to be in care, we want that something like that, that empowerment. You've seen it all and you've heard it all from the horse's mouth. I'm going to leave you to judge and also to rate his performances in all of these areas that we talked about uh, in the course of the interview. Uh, like I always say, it could be your community or your local government that Scorecard shall be visiting next time. This is Wumia Eni signing off. See you next time.